I forgot to hit record earlier, so let me go back and repeat what I was saying. If you are working for the post office and somebody brought a package for you, they want to ship it to their cousin in San Francisco. Well, you'll notice the person behind the desk will take a measuring tape if it's a little bit big and measure the length of it, the width and the height. And they actually add them to see if the number is less than a certain number that the post office uses. If it's below that number, then yes, you can ship it with them. If it's over that, that says, sorry, we can't ship it. So now, the first thing when you go to define these variables, the length, the width, and the height, is you need to ask yourself, can these values be decimal? When you take that tape and you measure the length of the box, can that box be 12.5? And if the answer is yes, you're not going to use integer because integer doesn't have a decimal value. So I'm using double for that. And that's why I start assigning values to them. And the height is equal to, I don't know, um, 9.75. Now I get the three values. And I need to measure now, add them together, the sum. I guess I'm going to define a dummy variable here called double again. You can define them anywhere. I'm going to call the sum. You can give it any name you want to. And that's going to equal the length plus the width plus the height. And now let's print the sum so the person will know if they can ship it or not. Siso uh, So I'll have him print this, the sum of the three numbers is put the space and let's add to that notice that's a string is going to print the statement exactly the way you see it in that double quotation and now you want to add to that the sum so let's save it and let's run it and see what will happen and here we go on the bottom the sum of the three numbers is so the guy said, yep, yeah, I can ship that for you. So you pay him the money and you leave. Well, the next person comes in now. That person has different dimension. Their length and their width and height is not going to be the same as yours. So now you expect that person, that postal service person, to go to the program and change these numbers. Well, that's not a good way of writing a program. That's not really the best way. So... What's another way? Instead of assigning the value, assign the value if you know that's not going to change. It's going to be always the same regardless what we do. Then you assign the value to that, like pi, for example. Pi does not change. It's always the same. E does not change. It's always the same. So those, you can assign the value to them. But the age of a person, the name of a person, the length of a box, that changes. So instead of doing that, I'm going to block these. So I don't want to delete them because I want you to see what I did. So I'm making them remark or comments. So the machine doesn't really run them. So if I ask the machine to run the program now, I'll get a problem because they don't know what the length, the width, or the height. Notice I'm getting a syntax error. They don't know what these are. Unknown. If you want to fix that, you can say, you know, when you design, when you start with this, when you put that memory aside, give it the initial value of zero. Clean it. So whatever was in it is going to be zero now. You can do that. You can initialize them to zero. And now this sum will be okay. That will be a zero. So to use the scanner, which is, again, use the console, the keyboard to input the values, I need to go... And add, again, hopefully you read what I wrote there in Modular 2 using the scanner. There's a couple of things you have to do. First one, you have to write import. And we're going to tell them it's Java dot util dot scanner. That says, okay, I'm going to use the scanner or the keyboard to get the values from. That's the first line you have to do. And you can put it anywhere. This is, the, this is the main body of your program between these two. So before you use that, you have to use the next line. So I usually put it way up on the top, just so I don't forget about it. If I'm using a scanner, I always put that on the top. 
I go scanner and you can specify a name there any name you want to I can call it input I use capital I you notice I use capital letter for the first letter of every variable I use there because in Java all the predefined values all the predefined variables the reserve words always lowercase so by using a capital letter I'm guaranteeing I'm not using any of the reserve words they use like you can use the word scanner you can use double you can use byte you can use int you can't use for while you'll see that as we go farther with the course or method or class these are reserved so by using capital letter I can use anything I want to use so I gotta tell them that's a new scanner in parentheses system dot in so we use system dot out right here to print the result to the console down here we use system dot in to read a value from the keyboard so now if you want to ask the person to enter the length and the width and the height if I go and I type this there we go um, let's say I want to get the length I go let the length equals input that's why I use capital I dot and this variable is a double so I gotta write next double now let me run the program and see what will happen and notice the machine really you don't see it is waiting for me here down in the bottom it's waiting for me to type a value for the length but there's nothing telling me enter a length so that's not a good way of writing a program someone looking at this they have no idea what I'm talking about so if I type 56.3 the machine will accept that number and notice the sum of the three sides 56.3 why because the width was defined to be zero the height was initialized to be zero the length initially was zero but I just changed it with 56.3 so you notice that was not a good way so maybe I should do here siso and tell the person please enter the length so that person knows maybe I'll do this and instead of print line maybe print and leave the cursor there so when you type your number it goes next to the length let me see what that looks like and notice is waiting for me right here please enter the length that's the one bad thing about scanner you gotta come back and click here otherwise it's gonna type it right there so click here so you can enter the value there 44.29 hit enter so that's a nicer way the person knows now the user knows looking for the length so let's repeat that and let's ask for the width and the height Please enter the width. And let's read the width now. And let's ask for the height. Oh, I use capital W for the width. Notice that's why it's wrong. Uh, enter the height here. And now if I save this please enter the length and I go uh, 56.38 please enter the width and I'm gonna type 44.29 please enter I go right to the here please enter the height that was the width there uh, 19 hit enter 
it says the sum of the three numbers is 119.67. So now the person at the post office never have to look at the program, never have to change the program, just click on run and you end up right there just entering the values and that will tell you. And when the next person comes in, they just click this one and they type in their numbers. The next one has a smaller box, six by three by four, I don't know. And the dimensions are when you add them, that's 13. And if you want to ask for the name of the person, I'm doing that intentionally because it's going to be a problem here. So here we go. Let's ask for the name of the person. So the name is going to be a string. String name. And let's ask for the name, please enter. So let's, here we go. I'll copy and paste. Please enter the name of the customer. Now I gotta read the name. But wait a minute. The name is not a double. Maybe I should use capital N. It's it's okay for because name is not reserved, but I'll just take what I just said here. So the name is not uh, a double, it's not an integer number, it's not a number, it is a string. So how do we ask the machine to put that in? Well, instead of next, there's something called next line. And that will read the entire line as part of your name. So let's do this. Let's run it. Please enter the customer name. Please enter the length. Please enter the width. Please enter the height. The sum of the three numbers is. And maybe you want to write thank you, Z. So you want to tell the customer thank you in your statement, sys O. Thank you. And you put the name of the person plus name. Write the word thank you plus write the name like thank you, Z had dad. Save it and run it. Can't even spell. Uh, 15. I don't know. Thank you, Z had dead. And if you want spaces like between the input and the output, I keep reaching for the wrong mouse. You can go slash N to put a space between them, maybe two spaces, and that will do that. There's one potential problem you could have here. Now, I want to point that right now, one potential problem. Let's assume you decided to read the name after you enter the three sides. You enter the length, the width, and the height, and now you ask for the name. So let me move this one, these two lines, let me move them, copy that, or cut actually, let me cut that, and let's put them after you read the three sides. Here we go. Uh, so right here, this comment, I'm putting remark, get the name. So that just let you know, this section of the program is gonna get the name. Please enter the customer name. And maybe I should have put here a little remark, get the three sides. So this will actually get the length of the, th the three sides. This section gets the name, and this section is gonna print, the space means nothing, print 
the sum of the sides. So we, you know what each piece does. So here's the problem right there. When you go to get the name, let's see what's going to happen. Let's watch and see. I'm going to put the name, I mean the length, 66, and I hit enter to go to the next line. The next one is 55, and I hit enter. And the next one, 12.5, I'm going to hit enter now. Then the machine is going to go and ask me for the name. Please enter the name of the person. And notice it's not allowing me to type it. I can't type it. It's already even by never even stopped here and waited for me to type the name. Why? Because when I entered the last number, when I put the last number for that, which was 12.5, the machine took the 12.5 and put it right there. Then what happens after I hit 12.5? I hit enter. I hit the key enter. Well, that key enter now went right here and that became the name of the person. Because that's a string. It's actually a character. A string could be one character, two, three, four, five. So it took that enter key and made that the name. So that's one thing you have to be careful with. So when you go to read a name after you read the numbers, what you want to do is put an extra line here. You can do one of two things. You can use the ignore command here, or you can do a blind one, meaning what? You can ask the machine just to read another line that's really blank there. So I can say input right after you read the number dot Next line, and what that does here, what that does, it takes that enter key and puts it here. I'm not even using it. I'm not even assigning it to anything. So now we'll wait for me when I get to this to enter my name. Let's see if it's going to do that. The length, 44, 56, 13. I'm going to hit enter. Once I hit the enter, that enter should go into input. Oh, I typed this one wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. What happened here? I typed that one completely wrong. Input, next line. So that doesn't run here because I had it wrong there. Let me just save it and run it again from the beginning. Sometimes I don't look to see what I'm writing there. There's my third number, 8.4. And once I hit the enter, I should be okay. It should ask me for the customer name. And I type in Z Haddad. Now notice it waited for me now to write that. And if I hit enter, it's going to say thank you. It's going to give me the, the length of that. And it's going to say thank you, Z. Here we go. The sum of the three numbers is 66.9. Thank you, Z had that. So be careful with that. This is just to read the enter key after the number. Reads the enter key after the number. That's what that does. Or you can use the dot ignore, which we'll get to that later too. So I'll, I'll stop with this video. I try to make my videos all short. This is 20 minutes, so I don't want to make it too, too long.